Obesity costs the NHS more than £4 billion a year. And at the other end of the scale, an estimated 1.6 million people are affected by eating disorders. Radical action is called for, so Dr Christian summoned together 16 people with disastrous diets who all desperately need to ditch their dangerous eating habits before it's too late. And for the first time, I'm bringing all the supersizers and the super skinnies together to face the scales for a mass weigh-in. Before they're paired off, super size versus super skinny. I'm like three of you. <laughs> Dr Christian will be checking them into the feeding clinic to confront their unhealthy relationships with food. It's a shame that the eating's sort of overtaking your life. To kickstart a healthier lifestyle. The more honest you can be with yourself about how much you eat. I am then you're going to be able to deal with it. And in this new series, our very own fat controller is in America's fattest city to learn the lessons of where it's all gone wrong. I think we're reaching a crisis level, and it's getting worse. In the hope that we can stop eating ourselves into an early grave. And back in the UK, we'll be delving into the world of eating disorders, as seen through the eyes of those who've suffered. I've like vomited blood before where I've put a tiny tear into my esophagus through the pressure of being sick. And we'll be revealing how to spot the warning signs if you think someone you know may be at risk. Because it's not what you're eating, it's what's eating you. Over the past 30 years, obesity rates have trebled in the UK, with almost half of all men and a third of all women overweight. Dr Christian's concerned, so to shock us into choosing a healthier future, he's come to America's fattest city, Evansville, where almost 40% of residents are clinically obese. Where the US leads, the UK soon follows. With a quarter of us already classified as obese, it's predicted that by 2050, we'll be spending an extra 7.7 .7 billion pounds on obesity-related healthcare alone. What's happening here in Evansville is a very real future for us in the UK. So far, Dr. Christian's witnessed the struggles that come with being grossly overweight. Do you think this is a losing battle? Sometimes it feels like a losing battle. And what happens when obesity becomes fatal? Oh, my goodness me. This is our largest casket. It'll hold over a 1,000 pounds. It looks like a hot tub. But stateside, it's not just the coffins that have supersized. Because patients here are getting bigger and bigger, regular ambulances can no longer cope to transport them. So the hospitals have had to call in the services of these new supersized ambulances to transfer their obese and super obese patients. We use it almost every other day. In fact, we've got to run now. Can I follow you? Sure. I won't get in the way, sure. I promise no you. No problem. This bariatric ambulance, or jumbulance, is one and a half times bigger than a normal American ambulance, costs a quarter of a million dollars, and can cope with patients weighing up to 100 stone. In the UK, a standard ambulance can only cope with patients who weigh up to 30 stone, but bariatric vehicles are already hitting streets across the country. The West Midlands have added four to their fleet, and in London, there's already a privately run service, as well as two NHS ambulances, with a third on its way. So I'm just following the bariatric ambulance as it goes to pick up a lady. She's super morbidly obese. She needs to come into hospital for some treatment because she's got terrible swelling, edema, water retention in her legs. They get very, very large. She's very immobile. So we're going to go and pick her up now. The lady in question weighs around 35 stone, so getting her to hospital is no mean feat. In fact, they've called in for extra support. This is actually really incredible. The amount of work required just to move one patient, you need two vehicles and you need four paramedics. Think of the cost and the time and the amount of resources that are involved in just moving that patient. Hello. How you doing? Stacey, can I come say hi to you? Yeah. So you've got this life in it, but this is all fluid and swelling, and this has all got to be brought down. Yeah. Stacy is 48 and suffers with lymphedema in her legs. Oh. You all right, Stacy? Yeah. Yeah? Stacy is harnessed to a supersized double stretcher. You feel secure, safe? Right. Yeah. OK, well, we're, we're off. Here. Before being lifted by a specialist winch that is usually used to recover broken-down cars. 
you can really see why a vehicle like this is so important. Getting a 30, 40, 50 stone patient up a ramp into an ambulance by manpower is really difficult. So this makes it a whole load easier. The Deaconess Hospital is at the forefront of fighting fat in Evansville. Looking after Stacy is lymphedema therapist Stephanie Retter, who's going to be gently massaging the huge quantity of fluid that's built up in Stacy's legs back into her upper body. Did you ever imagine you'd need all of this? No. And how do you feel about that now? Sometimes I wish I didn't, you know, I didn't have all this fluid because it does cause a lot of problems. You who work on the front lines dealing with it, why do you think it's happening? Too much convenience and not enough self-responsibility in many cases. I think that we've all just succumbed to fast food and we drive our car two blocks down the road instead of walking. Do you think you're reaching crisis point with all this? I think we're reaching a crisis level and it's getting worse. That's a frightening thought. It is. I found the whole thing really quite eye-opening in the amount of people involved, the cost of the equipment involved, the sheer time it's taken to get her here to her appointment. The mind boggles how the NHS is ever going to cope with that, I have no idea. Back in the UK, in a bid to avoid what's happening in the States, Dr Christian is tackling dietary crimes at both ends of the scale by gathering together our 16 super sizers and super skinnies. They're beginning their journey of confronting their own unhealthy eating with the shock of confronting their opposites. And Dr. Christian is sizing them up, ready for what comes next, a table for two at his feeding clinic. Hi, guys. I want to pair you off with each other. And I've got very specific reasons for doing that, which will become clear. So, Rob, come forward. And I want to match you up with Hayley. Hiya. Hello. Hey, Hello. I'm sorry, but I've never met anyone as big as I yourself. Know, like You've got bigger boobs than I am. <laughs> Firstly, I thought, don't touch me. Without being rude to them, they were kind of sweating and, you know, and I thought, please don't hug me, please don't hug me. <laughs> you can feel my bones. Can you feel your bones at all? No. <laughs> she was a bit shocked, the size of me. I just because the shock grew the size of her. You could see the bones from the back and the sides. Rob and Haley may be the same age and height, but when it comes to their diets and waistlines, they couldn't be more different. Haley is incredibly focused about what she eats, whereas Rob just eats mindlessly. I'm hoping that their time in the feeding clinic will show them how extreme their diets have become. Twenty-five-year-old youth worker Rob Gillett from Bridge End might only be a tiny five foot three inches tall, but he's a colossal thirty-five stone ten. Single Rob gorges on more than seven thousand calories a day, which has left him with a gut-busting waistline measuring seventy-eight inches. But mostly sweet stuff like sweets, chocolate, biscuits, cakes. I don't mind a pie once in a while. Oh, pie. In the middle, I don't like when I see, but when I come down to eat the food, I just want to eat it. Eat, eat, eat. I don't smoke, so my addictions are cola and cake. Every day, Rob swills four litres of cola. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> and chomps on copious quantities of cakes, biscuits, and donuts. Yeah, I do like my donuts with cream in. They're my favourite. Most cakes I eat. Rob's sugar obsession has come at a high price to his weight, and at 25, he only has six teeth left. Even when Rob's in the office, he doesn't stop eating. Uh, hold on one second, Joe. We are concerned about his weight, and I think he's possibly been put in a bit on lately. The biscuit barrel is always empty. I am a picker. I like to pick things. I'm always picking. After a hard day's work, it's not long before Rob's tummy is rumbling again, and he's usually round to his grands for a slap-up tea. I like my nan's bolognese. I like any food. I think that's the problem. I know I do spoil him, but all my kids, if they come here, if you want it, you have it. Yeah, I do think my nan feeds me more than she should, but that's a granny thing, looking after your grandchildren. Nice, isn't it? At the age of 25, Rob has never had a girlfriend. 
I don't chat to girls because I just don't see the point no more. I'd love to see Rob out on the town, on the tiles, with, you know, with the lads, you know, pulling the women. Yeah. And the most important reason to lose my weight is I can fit into the fashionable clothes, be with the lads, go out more, meet friends, just generally be a proper 25-year-old lad. Because at the moment, I'm not. And having already suffered too many strokes in his teens, time's running out to turn his life around. I do cry sometimes before I go to sleep. If I can't do something now, I'm just gonna, I'm going to die early. Mortgage advisor Hayley Payne from Suffolk may be the same age as Rob, but incredibly, she's almost 30 stone lighter at only 6 stone 12. That's because she's always on the go and eating barely gets a look in. Food completely takes a back seat in my life. It's something that I know you have to do to keep alive, but it's a bit of an inconvenience for me because it takes up my time. I run on quite a lot of nervous energy. The day I stop will be the day I crash. In fact, hyperactive Haley gets through the day on just spoonfuls of sugar and copious amounts of tea. I love tea an awful lot. And come the evening, any remaining energy is spent on cooking for others, especially new husband Chris. I tend to like to pile his plate up quite a lot because I like to see that he's eating a good amount. Mine tends to be a third of what he eats. Yeah, Haley's portions always fit for a sparrow, whereas mine is enough for an elephant to eat. I'm surprised I'm not 20 stone <laughs> the way I eat. Haley married Chris six months ago, but the realization she'd become a bony bride has prompted her to want to change her ways. My well, wedding day was definitely the biggest day of my whole life. I felt like I was the one that let it down by being so skinny. Hayley's now at risk of damaging her health and being infertile, and obviously as a newly married couple, there's something we discuss, children and things like that. I want people to look at me and think I'm healthy because I do want to have a family in the future. So massively determined just to start to feel healthy and get my life sorted, really. Coming up, Hayley and Rob tackle each other's distorted diets in the feeding clinic. He probably tells himself he has a bowl of cereal and he's actually had a whack and great plate of fryer. Rob heads to the USA for a wake-up call, courtesy of his supersized American host. My name is Donna Simpson. I'm 44 and I'm 42 stone. Before Dr. Christian turns up to deliver some alarming news. Your body mass is the highest that I have ever had 